It's Wednesday, February 16th, and the time for your Barbados Today Morning News Update. The Barbados Union of Teachers and the Barbados Secondary Teachers Union welcome the phase to return of face-to-face -face classes starting February 21st. However, the unions have taken different positions on a decision by education officials for some educators to resume school at a later date. Emmanuel Joseph reports. During that same press conference, Chief Education Officer Dr. Ramona Archer Bradshaw explained how that flexibility would work as she declared that the Ministry of Education values teachers and principals. Archer Bradshaw said the Ministry will accommodate those teachers who do not feel comfortable returning to the classrooms on February the 21st. We have taken into account what is being said by our unions and we are flexible enough at this point to allow those teachers the time that is about one week to settle themselves to return at a later date. But newly elected president of the Barbados Union of Teachers, Rudy Lovell, expressed reservations about having some teachers start in-person teaching on February the 21st and others the following week. Because essentially, one can say being delayed with the option being given to some teachers who are not comfortable to return. Um, but on the other hand, you cannot have um, teachers given an option to, to return when they feel comfortable and still expect the schools to function efficiently. However, President of the Barbados Secondary Teachers Union, Mary Redmond, embraced the phased return to the physical classroom and the flexible arrangements for its members who have been pushing for a delay to the recommencement of the face-to-face -face classes due to the spike in COVID-19 cases, particularly among those of school age. The BSTU is satisfied with the provision of the phased return and the flexibility and um, phase return to face-to-face -face instruction and the flexibility it allows, ignore my dog in the background, mm. for the timing of the return to school by its members and the phased nature of the return of students. Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. Health officials in Barbados would like to see a national vaccination rate of 70% among students. However, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Kenneth George said that's not a requirement for the return to face-to-face -to -face classes at this time. He stated the position in an update on the vaccination rate for teachers and students ahead of the reopening of physical school plans from February 21st. Vaccination rate for teachers is about 62, between 62 and 65 percent. We obviously vaccines are available for all adults. So from where I see it, there's no reason why teachers should not be vaccinated. So we would like to see that number well over 80 percent. And with respect to um, schools, we have had around 10,000 students representing half the student population that could be vaccinated receiving immunization. So the Ministry of Health will continue to promote vaccinations. Ideally, we would like to see it nationally at 70%, but it is not a requirement for the restart of schools at this time. Education officials will assess on a case-by-case -case basis the wearing of uniforms by students as they return to face-to-face -to -face classes on a phased basis from February 21st. Word of this from Chief Education Officer Dr. Ramona Archer Bradshaw. She was responding to a question posed by the media during a press conference on Tuesday on the inability of some parents to source uniforms at this time for their wards and children. We want all of our children to attend schools clad in their uniforms. But we understand the constraints that some parents may have, especially in the midst of this pandemic. We understand some parents may have lost their jobs. 
Some parents are working reduced hours and may not be able to afford a full uniform for their children or for their wards. Having said that, on a case-by-case -case basis, the principals will evaluate and allow students to, for example, come to school with soft shoes or what we call sneakers if they don't have the, the proper or the school shoes at the point in time. It may be that the child may not be able to fit in the formal uniform, but they can wear their game's clothes. If that is the case, then that will be allowed. Or it might be a case that the child can't fit in the game's clothes nor the formal school clothes. If that is the case, the child can wear a plain shirt and a jeans pants, you know, a white shirt and a jeans pants. The big picture that we have here is for each and every child to receive an education face to face. Measures are being put in place to bring relief to St. Lucie residents plagued with water shortages and quality issues. That's according to Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Transport and Water Resources, Santia Bradshaw, following a tour of several affected communities in the constituency on Tuesday. She said that the Barbados Water Authority had sourced additional community water tanks that will be placed in the impacted areas, even as long-term solutions are in the works. The Water Authority has been able to source a number of water tanks um, for which we've agreed just this afternoon that we would prioritize these types of areas and some of the other households where we recognize that they are in dire need of having a constant water supply. And so we will work over the course of the next few days, certainly, to continue to speak to the public and in particular the residents of St. Lucie to be able to roll out um, that program, but also to be able to do to start the needs replacement across the parish of St. Lucie to address a number of the there's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses, and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To news from other region, the Bahamas' health minister, Dr. Michael Davil, says the easing of COVID-19 restrictions will not happen quickly, even though the country is at the tail end of its fourth wave. More in this report from our news, Bahamas. For us, restrictions is not just numbers. Restrictions is directly tied in with what is happening at our tertiary facilities. We still have some challenges at the Princess Margaret Hospital, the Rand Memorial Hospital. And until we are satisfied that a lot of the challenges that we currently face are being resolved, we will have to move slowly rather than moving quickly because the healthcare facilities are absolutely necessary in order for us to be able to reduce the mortality as well as the morbidity as a result of COVID-19. Though many states in the U.S. are dropping restrictions, including mask mandates, Dr. Darvel explained that one hack doesn't fit all. We need to revisit and improve the manpower resources, our medical teams. Our teams are burnt out, and we need to find ways to relieve the stress and strain on small units at our tertiary facilities. And so we see other countries dropping all the restrictions. Maybe that's good for them, but the Bahamas must think in terms of the context that we're in. Following an alarming rise in COVID-19 cases over the holidays, daily numbers have decreased to double digits and in some cases, single digits in recent days. However, the health minister says he is still very concerned over vaccine uptick between individuals ages 12 through 17. 
On the international front, the World Bank Group warned on Tuesday that developing countries face growing risks from financial fragility created by the COVID-19 crisis and non-transparent debt. The newly released World Development Report also cited rising inflation and interest rate increases as additional challenges to the recovery. The World Bank's chief economist, Carmen Reinhardt, explains. Very few things are inevitable, but certainly this has been a 100 you know, once in a century pandemic. So the ramifications, especially for developing countries, protracted declines in income, now rising inflation, rising poverty rates, all these things combined to a lot of financial stress for households, for firms, and for financial institutions. And so that that's the, the, the big focus of the World Development Report, these interconnected vulnerabilities uh, of, the, of the various sectors. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.